Okay, hi everybody. We've been going along and um, doing some proofs, learning about uh, reviewing what you knew about um, positive integer exponents and then applying it to zero and negative exponents. Um, in the next part of this module, we're going to move into scientific notation, but for now what I want to do is kind of recap where we've been, um, prepare you to do the the lesson six problem set. We're going to skip the lesson six classwork, which are proofs. Um, you can look at those in the teacher edition, look through those so you see what it is you're missing. It's fun stuff, but we're going to move ahead and, but I'd like you to do the problem six lesson, um, the, sorry, lesson six problem set and, um, and then the mid-module assessment after you watch this video. Okay, so let's let's move ahead here. Um, I just have, I'm gonna cover some tricky spots. Okay, so um, in the very beginning, one of the things we covered was the need for parentheses on some of these exponential um, expressions. And here's, here's an example. And so you might be asked to show why negative three to the fourth with, with these here would be different from, in what way is this expression different from this one? And so the first one, this negative three with the parentheses means to use negative three as the base. So this would be what would be meant by that expression. It would be negative three used as a factor four times. All right. But the other expression, negative three to the fourth without parentheses, leads to this. So in this case, the exponent is only applied to the number directly next to it. So it's, it's positive three that we're multiplying four times here. So this negative sign out front just means take the opposite of it or multiply by negative one. So um, that is how those are different. Those would actually be different values in this case. Not always, but in this case they are. This expression is going to end up being positive because I have four, you know, I have pairs of negative, multiplying negative. So this is going to be positive three to the fourth. This one will be negative three to the fourth. Okay. Another thing we'll see often in algebra is these variable expressions raised to exponents. So once again, this exponent of three means to use two x as a factor three times. So that would look like this, 2x times 2x times 2x. Um, because 2x just means 2 times x, I can separate out all the numeric factors. So I have 2 times 2 times 2, and then I have times x times x times x. So this would be 2 to the third power times x to the third power. And that's just using the um, commutative property and associative property and the definition of exponents to get that. The other way I could think of this problem is to think of 2x as a product of 2 times x, which it is. Um, I could even put you know a little multiplication sign in there, 2 times x cubed. And so we could use the product rule because 2x, 2 times x to the third power, um, that product rule says I take each of the factors inside the parentheses and raise it to the exponent independently. So I can go so, so I can go directly to this same result by taking 2 to the third power and then x to the third power. Okay, let's look at another example here. Okay, so this is um, kind of a tricky uh, thing for for a lot of students to realize I can change the base in an exponential expression sometimes. Okay, so if I have eight raised to the third power, can I write that with a different base? Can I write it as a power of two? Two to some, some number power. So let's look at, at what we can do. So eight can be written as, so this eight, I can write it as two to the third power because I know that two times two times two is eight. So all I've done here is replace eight with two to the third. I'm using parentheses to show that my base is 
this exponential expression of 2 to the third. So it's 2 to the third to the third power, um, which is, we know from the rules of exponents, 2 to the 3 times 3, um, which is 2 to the ninth. If you forgot that rule that, that you would be multiplying, if you take a power to a power, you multiply, you could think of this as 2 to the third times 2 to the third, whoops, times 2 to the third, because it's 2 to the third used as a factor three times, and then I could see that this is 2 to the three plus three plus three. Um, you know, I could even write each of these out. Two times two times two, times two times two times two, times two times two times two. So it's three plus three plus three, which is the same as three times three, or two to the ninth. Okay, let's look at a little bit different example of that. What about 10 to the third? How could I change the base of 10 to the third? And we'll talk about why you might wanna do that in just a minute, but let's look at what you could do. Okay, so I could take 10 to the third, and I could rewrite that as 2 times 5 to the third. Just rewriting 10 as a product of the factors 2 and 5. Um, then I could take 2 times 5 to the third and write it as 2 to the third times 5 to the third. Um, so you might be thinking, well, why would I use this expression instead of this expression? Because it looks more complicated, and it is. The reason I would do that, and you'll see a problem like this in lesson six, and also on the mid-module assessment, the reason I might do this is if I have a fraction with um, this as one of the components, I might wanna be able to simplify that fraction, and if I had you know, other bases with two and five in it, then I would be able to simplify it. So sometimes in algebra it works to just be able to go both ways with expressions like this, to be able to change the base. So these are both examples of changing the base in an exponential um, expression. Okay. Um, another thing that we haven't had a lot of practice with in the problem sets is simplifying expressions like the one shown here. Okay, so the first thing we want to recognize is that these are, are just actually fractions. I can write 8x to the third by putting it over 1, and then I'm going to multiply these fractions by multiplying across the denominators and the numerators and getting something like this. So what I've done, um, if you notice, I've thought of this as 8 times x third, x to the third, sorry, times 3 right here, and this is just 1 times 4 times x to the 7th. So I've separated it, it out a little bit. And after you've done that, then you're going to, um, here's the, the numeric part and then the variable part. So kind of study this and see what I've done from this to this. 24 is 8 times 3. Um, so I put those together and put the x terms together. Okay, so we get to here. Then what we can do is just simplify these separately. So 24 fourths, or 24 divided by 4 is 6. x to the third divided by x to the seventh is x to the 3 minus 7, um, which becomes 6x to the negative 4. All right, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. And so... Um, we could leave it at that with a negative exponent. Sometimes problems will ask you to write these expressions with a positive exponent. And we learned in lesson five that um, the negative exponent is the reciprocal. And so this x to the fourth becomes one over, or x to the negative four becomes one over x to the fourth right here. So in the 6, we still have the 6 out front. So I can leave this as 6 times 1 over x to the 4th, or I can multiply through, and really what I'm doing here is thinking again of this as 6 over 1 times 1 over x to the 4th, and multiplying across. So I get 6 divided by x to the 4th. 
All right, if that, um, you might want to back it up and study that, that problem um, a little bit more if that is confusing to you. Okay, so let's, let's look a little bit more about negative exponents. Um, the last problem reviewed a little bit, and now I want to show you um, how you can be, just be really flexible with these negative exponents. So here's a problem, 7 to the negative 2 times 7 to the 3rd. The bases are the same, so I want to write an expression that combines those, those exponents there. All right, so if I just use the exponent rules, I can write that as 7 to the negative 2 plus 3 because when we multiply um, exponential expressions where the bases are the same, we just add the exponents. And I get 7 to the first power, which is um, just 7, right? 7 to the first power is equal to 7 used as a factor one time, which is 7. Um, that relies on having proved that the laws of exponents work for negative, negative numbers. If I wanted to, to work this out a different way, I would rewrite 7 to the negative 2 as 1 over 7 squared. That way I'm working with positive exponents here. And I know the rules for positive exponents, okay? And then I've got 7 to the third power, and I'm going to write that as a fraction over 1. And I'm going to multiply these fractions out. All right, and see if you can see what I did here. I have written this as 7 to the third, um, 1 times 7 to the third. I've written it as 7 squared times 7 to the first power. And then in the denominator, I've just multiplied across and got 7 squared. All right, the reason I did that is because I now want to take out that factor of 1, right? So I know that 7 squared divided by 7 squared is 1. So it's, and 1 is the identity for multiplication, so it doesn't change anything. So this just becomes 7 to the first power. All right, so I've shown really in this second example, I've shown more directly without using um, the laws of exponents for negative numbers, but I get the same thing, okay? So two different ways, same answer. Um, and this one, of course, would, would also be just seven. Seven to the first power is just seven. All right, let's look at another one. Okay, here, here's another one. Sometimes, in this curriculum, you're, you're asked to show directly only using definitions of exponents, okay? So we have some definitions for negative exponents. We want to work out 5 to the negative 3 times 5 to the negative 4. So um, the definition I'm using here is the definition of negative exponents. I know that 5 to the negative 3 is 1 over 5 to the third power. 5 to the negative 4 is 1 over 5 to the fourth power. Um, and now I can just use the product, you know, what I know about multiplying fractions. 1 times 1 is 1. Um, 5 to the third times 5 to the fourth becomes this over here. And that becomes 1 over 5 to the seventh. So I've used definition of negative exponents here. I've used um, just the product rule here, and I know that 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 4th is going to be 5 to the 7th by the um, product rule for positive exponents. All right, but now I can rewrite 1 over 5 to the 7th as 5 to the negative 7th, and that is the definition of negative exponents right here. So this, so all I used was definitions in doing it this way. But obviously a quicker way um, would be to use exponent rules. So using exponent rules for negative integers, I would get this would be 5 to the negative 3 plus negative 4. I add the exponents when the bases are the same. It gives me 5 to the negative 7th.
Okay, so um, there are no um, online questions for this video, uh, but what I'd like you to do now is to go to the Lesson 6 problem set and work on those problems. Feel free to um, struggle with those for a while and then check your results against the answer key. That or get hints from your parents. Um, for the proof problems, that would be problems, um, you know, basically uh, two through five. If you don't have exactly the same reasons as they do or the same steps, don't worry. But the basic idea is doing what I have shown you here is to only use, when you're asked to prove something, they're asking you to not use directly, you know, the exponent rules for negative numbers, but to um, to work it out by by changing them into positive exponents and then going through and changing them back to negative in the end. All right, so this is the type of thing that they're asking you to do in um, some of the problems in Lesson 6. And so do your best. Um, work on those, and then when you're done with that, you can watch the video if you need to that goes through the solutions to the Lesson 6 um, problems, and then you can go on to the mid-module assessment. All right, so by the end of the week, we'll be moving on to topic B, and hopefully you'll feel pretty confident about um, using these types of exponential expressions as we apply them to scientific notation in the coming days. All right, we'll um, see you back here soon for the Lesson 6 Problem Solutions.